Today we'll be talking about the developments in circuit breaker technology and how they can protect homes from one of the leading causes of household fires. Early residential electrical circuits were typically protected by fuses. When the circuits saw too much current, the metal strip in the fuse would melt apart or blow due to the heat generated. Of course, each time this happened, it had to be replaced. In 1936, Westinghouse unveiled the first residential circuit breakers. These breakers soon became the standard protection in residential wirings, replacing fuses with a more reusable design. Their operation was simple, monitor the circuit for excess current. Today, the same technology is still in use, but with a few improvements to help with better performance and quality. Now there are two events which the standard thermal magnetic breaker protects against, overloads and short circuits. An overload is where a circuit is pulling too much current and could potentially overheat and damage the wiring. This is often seen where too many devices are plugged into one outlet or on the same circuit. Once the breaker senses this overload, it trips, protecting the circuit from causing damage. It does this by way of an engineered bimetal that bends when current above its rating is applied across the circuit. It would only take a few seconds to trip the breaker if a high amount of excess current is being pulled through the circuit, but it could take several minutes if the current is just above the breaker's rating. Another condition that the standard breaker protects against is a short circuit. This is when two conductors come into direct contact. The resulting short circuit creates a spark or arc that often damages one or both of the circuit components. On a typical 20 amp breaker, a short circuit will increase the amount of electrical current starting at 10 to 20 times its normal load and can go as high as the available short circuit current of the system. Protection from short circuits is provided by means of an electromagnet. When current flows through a circuit, there is an induced magnetic field. Under normal conditions, the magnetic strength is not strong enough to mechanically trip the breaker. However, when a large amount of current passes through the circuit, it significantly increases the magnetic strength and will trip or break the circuit within a fraction of a second. In 1964, Westinghouse introduced the Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter, or GFCI. Where a standard thermal magnetic breaker is used to only protect the wire from short circuits and overloads, GFCI breakers protect people and equipment from electrical shocks. These breakers include the standard protection of a thermal magnetic breaker, as well as 5 milliamps of ground fault protection for people, or 30 milliamps of ground fault protection for equipment. A ground fault occurs when the current leaks from the hot wire to a grounded path. These leaks, if left undetected, can lead to equipment damage or cause harm to anything or anyone it comes into contact with. The GFCI breaker measures the amount of current leaving on the hot wire and compares it to the current returning on the neutral wire. If there's any difference, it assumes the missing current has found an alternate path and trips the circuit. GFCIs are required in bathrooms, kitchens, basements, garages, near swimming pools, and outdoor receptacles. The next type of breaker that was developed for residential applications was the Arc Fault Circuit Interrupter, or AFCI. Studies done during the early 1990s showed that a significant amount of residential electrical fires were being caused by a phenomenon called high current arcing. These situations occur when the insulation on the current carrying conductor is compromised and the current is given an arcing path. Now the device I have here is designed to recreate this high current arcing fault on a circuit monitored by a typical thermal magnetic breaker. If I cut into the lamp cord quickly, it will create a short circuit which this breaker will obviously detect. But the conditions leading to a high current arc are much more subtle, not nearly as abrupt as a short circuit. This arcing, which can be in excess of 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, exceeds 75 amps, but is typically below the short circuit threshold of the magnetic protection of the breaker. Additionally, the arc usually doesn't last long enough to heat the bimetal strip, tripping the breaker on thermal overload. 
As a result, the arcing fault is more often than not completely undetectable by standard breakers. The Branch Feeder AFCI was launched around 1994 to provide the overload and short circuit protection, plus protection for the high current arcing where the current exceeds two to three times the breaker's rating. Internal to the AFCI, a current monitoring circuit board detects any anomalies in the current flow and trips the breaker when a current signature matching an arc is detected. So let's try the same test with an AFCI breaker. As we see, the branch feeder AFCI trips under this circumstance. While this AFCI breaker has been providing fire protection for many years, additional studies have found that another type of arcing also contributes to electrical fires. This arcing condition is called low current arcing and is most common in household cords such as extension cords, appliances, lamps, etc. In this situation, one of the current carrying conductors is broken, but the two severed ends are still close enough for arcing to occur between them, resulting in the arc actually jumping across the gap. Since this arc is in series with the load, the current will be limited by the loads being drawn. This low current arcing is in the 5 to 10 amp range and won't be detected by the branch feeder AFCI. The combo AFCI was developed to detect this low current arcing. In addition to short circuit, overload, and high current arc fault protection, the combo AFCI provides protection for low current arc faults. As we see, the combo AFCI is able to detect this low current arc fault where any other breaker would fail to respond. The challenge with designing the combo AFCI breaker is that every electrical device will create arcs during their operation. When the contacts close or separate, they create these small arcs, just as I was trying in the demo here. The protective device needs to differentiate between these operational or intentional arcs, such as the flipping of a light switch or operation of a motor, and the non-operational or dangerous arc. The combo AFCI breaker is designed to ride through these operational arcs and only look for sustained low current arcing before tripping. Undoubtedly, you can see why arc faults are some of the most overlooked potential hazards in today's homes. But with Eaton, you can have the silent protection of the combo arc fault circuit interrupter, as well as peace of mind that your home is safe from these dangers. For Eaton Corporation, I'm Jason Nitzberg. Thank you for joining us today.